Hi everyone and welcome to my spoiler review of Eternals movie which I uh, watched a few minutes ago. This review was recorded immediately after finishing uh, Eternals movie. Uh, but before I proceed uh, with my review, I would just like to warn you guys that if you haven't watched the movie, please stop watching this review now. Okay, so here are some of the positives that I found. Uh, three characters uh, played their roles beautifully. Uh, one of them happens to be uh, the role of Dane Whitman, who will be, be eventually becoming the Black Knight, Icarus, and Thena. Uh, the remaining casting was done. In fact, the entire movie was done keeping the identity politics at the heart of it, rather than the story itself, the concept itself, because we need to understand what is what is the role Eternal Comics or Eternals as characters have played within the Marvel Universe. Just like in uh, monotheistic religions of Islam, Judaism, and Christianity, uh, we are uh, having uh, been told about how this universe came into being, uh, in how many days the universe was created, uh, who was the first human uh, that was created, or who was selected to be a representative, God's representative on Earth. So all of the metaphysical things that took place within the creation of this universe it provides the rationale, basically, if you will, a deeper philosophical, metaphysical rationale as to how our universe came into be being. The same role in Eternals plays, and the background to that is that Jack Kirby, after having dispute with DC Comics uh, with respect to his fourth world saga, came back to Marvel and he decided to uh, do something uh, which was heavily borrowed from the Greek mythology and to create something that would make sense of what the Marvel Universe is. Because we need to understand one thing that Marvel Universe, the comic book universe, is having one of the most organized uh, space uh, universe uh, compared with DC and any, any other uh, publisher that has a significant uh, space uh, presence. At the same time, whether we are talking about the unseen mystical realm and so forth, uh, Marvel has always been about maintaining consistent consistency throughout their content production. Eternals the movie Eternals the movie is a classic example of when you give too much creative control uh, to the director and especially when you have a producer who is uh, uh, very much identifying himself more with causes from the left uh, and for him Marvel projects are not about adaptation of masterpiece stories uh, onto the silver screen but rather it's more about uh, the leftist politically driven agenda and the identity politics comes along the Eternals were too humanized, similar to what Disney and Marvel Studios made the mistake in Avengers Endgame when they humanized Thor. They made him look like a bum. Uh, when you are pushing towards diversity, you need you start uh, to make less sense when you are totally trying to do it for the sake of pandering to different audiences. Kengo the Sun is an Indian. I mean, I believe that Kumail Nanjiani was just a token South Asian character within the movie. He could have been used in a much better way, even if they wanted to show him as a Bollywood star. Uh, it was a typical cliche kind of a portrayal, and uh, that sound is still buzzing in my head. Ooh la la, ooh la la, ooh, man, I mean, give me a break, man. I mean, you're talking about beings that have a majestic presence, that are, uh, th th that are the reason why human beings have had superpowers, and they have r risen to heroism, if you will. And next thing you know, you see them doing these childish acts and acting like token characters and all those comedic puns. You don't need that in in such a movie. This movie could have been an epic. I don't know what Chloe Zhao was thinking. The overall premise of the movie seems to be from a straightforward soap opera that is targeted to housewives where there is one housewife. Because if you look at the Eternals, you're looking at Cersei as a housewife who's trying to save the family. Why was Gilgamesh an Asian looking character? I think Kango son should have been the Asian because that's how he is in comics. Gilgamesh should have been a Middle Eastern guy because from from the Middle Eastern region that's where the legend comes from. This is totally illogical, totally illogical. I need to tell you why am I so much disappointed. The first time I came across an Eternal was in this comic book, okay, which I got. Uh, th this was bought from here, by the way. This is the good old days when in the 90s we could get Avengers, G.I. Joe, Spider-Man, Batman, Superman, all the major character comic books here. And if you notice here in the corner box, you see here Cersei. Now, why is an Asian character playing Cersei? Uh, don't mind the censorship because back in the day comic books were censored 
Cersei's clothes were revealing clothes. That's why you see all the marker being there. But like, I mean, when you are ca casting uh, Angelina Jolie and uh, Salma Hayek, why not make one of them Cersei and use Gemma Chan uh, for any other character? She could have been used as Ajax. She could have been used uh, for Makari. Uh, and then at the same time you're having this gender swapping and last but certainly not the least I mean a character like Fastos what did you guys do with this character it seems that the purpose of humanizing them to the point that where they feel like having families and stuff and all that googly giggly kind of thing is this what Eternals are all about they are not about this mind you Jack Kirby's Eternals was not a successful comic uh, much like the fourth world saga but it still had a cult following its, its stories made sense uh, there is a lot of uh, effort that was being put into place and then later on came in 2006 a legendary comic book writer Neil Gaiman who makes Eternals more relevant, who redefines the characters for modern times. Fastos is an overacting African American plus a member of the LGBTQ community whose partner happens to be an Arab. What I am really surprised to see is the fact that how uh, the pro-Disney and the pro-Marvel media started to make noise about the GCC countries censoring, wanting to censor this and then later on ending up banning this movie because Disney was refusing to cut the scene, that an intimate scene between Fastos and his spouse. But they were totally fine if these countries wanted to cut the scene between Icarus and Cersei. Talk about hypocrisy. So this was to do about political mileage and it was not... Uh, I, I mean, I, I'm, it, I feel really bad in saying this, but it's good that Jack Kirby is not alive to see this trash that I saw. I thought Thor Dark World was boring, but at least it had a story. At least uh, it felt like I was watching uh, uh, the, the something from Thor's comics. The only positive, like I said earlier, the character of Dane Whitman, uh, because that is something which is much more closer to comics than we see Star Fox. Uh, and Pip the Troll, Patton Oswald voicing Pip the Troll, that's good, and uh, the introduction of Blade. If after watching this review you don't feel like watching Eternals, I would say that please just go for the mid-credit and the post-credit scene and you'll be good. Uh, in my opinion, the last boring project that was done, which was a really drag when it came to Marvel, was Ang Lee's Hulk. I think this movie has now surpassed it. So thank you very much for watching. If you agree with my review, please make sure to share it. If you have any questions or any points of disagreement, whatever, feel free to comment. Keep your comments polite and I'll definitely be getting back to you on that. Uh, and another reminder that for those who like this movie or for those who dislike this movie, it gives us a greater reason to read comics. It's not as bad as what we saw in the Eternals movie. Thank you. Hope to see you guys later.